remind you of the digital map notebook you have. We have the content page. We also mention about the order that you should use in solving for the missing side. If you can use Pythagorean theorem, use it first. Especially when they give you a side and an angle, that should be the light bulb that should tell you, hey, that's special right triangle. If you, they are giving you two side length, then that's the hint to give you that you should use the Pythagorean theorems. A side and an angle, special right triangle. It's either 30, 60, 90 or 45, 45, 90. And when you cannot use any of these two methods, Pythagorean theorem or a special right triangle, that's when we will use trigonometry to solve for the missing side length. And that's what we're going to learn in the next lesson, trigonometry. In this lesson, I will show you problem solving with special right triangle. We have two cases of special right triangle. The first one being the triangle with 30, 60, 90 degree. And the second one is 45, 45, 90 degree. The second one, 45, 45, 90 degree, also have a different name called isosceles right triangle. And that's because of the two congruent angles reflecting onto opposite side being congruent. So when we have two side congruent, we call it isosceles right triangle. On the very right hand side, if you look at the right hand side of this note page right here, we have different um, variation of the same formulas for you. Just in case you see the formulas or the ratio in the um, letter X, like for example, on the first, the short leg is called X. And then the long leg is called X square root of three. And then the hypotenuse is where we multiply the short leg by two, so two X. On the right hand side of that one where we have the blue triangle, you see the same ratio or the same formula, the exact same formula. It's just using different letters. Instead of X, I use the letter A. We have A, two A for the hypotenuse, a square root of 3 for the long leg. And then you might also see the letter N, um, like the one on the 45, 45 degree, 90 degree right here. You also see the same letter A represent A square root of 2 and then A. And on the formula with the letter N, it's just using a different variable for the same exact formulas. And you are seeing N and the two congruent side in the isosceles triangle, the hypotenuse is n square root of 2. You can see it's the exact same formulas as this one on the right, but it has the one on the left is the letter n and the one on the right is the letter a. And remember too that we could also use x instead of n or a. After the variation of the same formulas, let us go ahead and give you the formulas. And if you can memorize these formulas, it will help a lot on problem solving. So don't forget to complete your flashcards. The first one is the 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. The half equilateral triangle is also known as the 30, 60, 90 triangle. The side of these triangles are always in the ratio. And we're going to go ahead and fill in the boxes for your notes. Okay, don't leave the boxes blank. The ratio is going to be for the smaller leg. You're seeing the smaller leg right here. And how do I know it's a smaller leg? Not just my eyes, it's shorter, but also I hope that you can see it's opposite or it's right across from the 30 degree, the smallest angle in this triangle. That's 30, so right across or opposite or the side that doesn't make that angle, that's the opposite side. And we have that one as X right here. So that's a one X without a number, it's a one in front. The hypotenuse is two times that length. And then the long leg, which is opposite from or across from the 60 degree, that's the long leg. We have the short leg x multiplied by square root of three. The ratio that I just put in one, one square root of three and two. Let's us show you how it looked like in problem solving. In 5-59, straight from your ebook, use the tools you have developed thus far to find the length of the missing side of the triangles. 
And the tool that they're mentioning is the uh, Pythagorean theorem. We show you that in a previous lesson. You may review the video called Pythagorean theorem. I have two part on it. Part one talk that talk about a Q right or obtuse triangle, and then part two of the Pythagorean theorem is where it's actually show how to use the formulas in problem solving. What side that is called? Is it a short leg? Is it a long leg? Is it a hypotenuse? And if you don't know how to identify, make sure to ask teachers or make sure to review the instructional video. Otherwise, we will not be able to solve the problem. 12 is the hypotenuse because it's right across from this 90 degree. So that's my hypotenuse side. And I'm looking for the short and the long leg. If I do have one more leg, I can use Pythagorean theorem. Now I only have a leg and an angle. That's where you have to use the special right triangle. The ratio or formula is right here. I see that my hypotenuse is going to be two times as long as the smaller leg. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to divide this 12 by two to get my smaller leg or my short leg. We are going to have the short leg. See, this is 30 degree. And even though it's not in there, you need to know that, you know, this is 60, this is 90, then this has to be 30 degree. We can write it in, even though that is not needed, we're solving for the missing side, but know that that's the number that is missing for that angle. We are going to find the short side and we already said 12 divided by two. Now I'm going to get the long leg and the long leg is where I'm taking the short leg, the smaller leg, and multiply it by square root of three. And my answer is 6 square root of 3. And that's all we have to do. Using the formulas, you can see how easy it is in applying and getting the missing side. The second case, special right triangle. We have 45, 45, 90 degree. Another name for it is isosceles right triangle. But we're going to go ahead and get these ratio in and make sure that you fill in for your note, you don't leave it blank. As the x x is mean that it's going to be the exact same numbers for whatever this side is. This side is going to be the same. One square root of two. At the tick mark, that should tell you that they are exactly the same length. I have three on that one. Then the side here is going to be three as well. So that's why the size is one to one is the exact same length and then what happened to the hypotenuse i just take that side one and i multiply by square root of two so in this case it's three so my answer for the hypotenuse yes, is three square root of two. on the letter c you are seeing two sides three and four and if you are trying to use the special right triangle you will have a hard time doing it because it doesn't give you special right triangle there. We don't know the angle. See, this angle could be anything. And we don't know if it's 45, 45 or it's 30, 60. So we cannot use a special right triangle in letter C. But you can use something that you've learned previously. Remember the Pythagorean theorems? Yes. You have two sides. Just plug it in, A and B, 3 and 4. And then the hypotenuse, you're looking for the C, and you can find the hypotenuse. And if you remember 3, 4, 5, the most basic right triangle, the hypotenuse is 5. And I don't even have to find it using the Pythagorean theorem. I just have to remember the most basic right triangle as we proved it to you in the Pythagorean theorem video is three, four, five. I can go ahead and fill in the le the number five for this problem. That's easy, guys. Yeah, don't make it complicated. Let's go ahead and see what we have for 5-62. It's these problem on the bottom. I don't see the tick mark, so that's what you can do to mark your pictures. I know that they are 45, 45. That's how I know that they are going to be right isosceles. And whatever I have for x, on that side, I'm going to get the same exact letters, the same exact length. If I have 5, it's 5. If I have x, it's x. If I have y, it's y. What is the one for this hypotenuse here? It's going to be x, the exact same length, multiplied by square root of 2. 30, 60, 90. The shortest leg is y. Okay, so then 
what is the longer leg and what is the hypotenuse. You will remember the formulas for the um, shortest leg, 30, 60, 90. We have shortest or smallest leg. One, then the hypotenuse is two times that length. So here, I'm going to have y for the shortest leg. Then the hypotenuse is just 2y. Okay, don't be afraid when it's the letter. It's going to use the same formulas. The last side right here is the longer side because it's right across from the 60 degree. So what do I do with the longer leg? I get the short leg, which is whatever length that is, square root of 3. So I take y multiplied by square root of 3. The answer will get variable because we start out with variable y. The last problem, we are given two sides. Well, guess what? It's just the Pythagorean theorem. And we are going to use the exact same formulas. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Or A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Your choice, which one first. And uh, we will go ahead and use 3x and 4x. Substitute it in for A and B. And then find the C, the hypotenuse, the longest leg show the work for the letter C problem on this right hand side and uh, this is a common mistake I want to point out here. First of all I started with the formulas and then I used the information given to me on this problem 3x4x substituted in for a and b lake. I am going to simplify it and then I caught myself oops here's the common mistake I need to point out to you. You see do you see it? Yes, 3x squared, and that means I only have this square on the x, where I need to raise everything to the second power. So that cannot be correct. You don't get 7x squared over here. You're going to get 3 times 3, which is 9x. So what do we need? We need parentheses. The square is going to apply on both the 3 and x. And the square also apply on both the 4 and the x. So be extra careful with this step when we have number and letter mixed in like that. 9x square. Now I can open the parenthesis because I already raised everything inside to the second power. Plus, and then 4 times 4 is 16, 16x squared x squared times x squared, we get x to the fourth power. We're adding, so we can only add like terms. Here is another common mistake, I just realized it. We use x for the missing side, but we cannot use x in this case because it will be confused with the x on the right-hand side. So when we get to this part and you realize, oops, no, this has to be called something else. You can call it m, you can call it y, you can call it z, and you may also use the same letter c, but don't use the x because x here, if you have x squared here, it will be confused with the one on the right. And in this scenario, we don't want you to use the X. Leave the missing side as the letter C. Instead of making up another letter like M and anything else, C. And what I'm going to end up with on the right hand side when I simplify 9X squared plus 16X squared, remember they can only add when they are like terms. Whatever you do on the left, Make sure to do it the same on the right hand side. We are going to end up with c equal square root of 25x squared. I will get just 5x. c equal 5x and that might find no answer for these problems. The formulas we have, it can be on the top box inside this box right here. Also, we have the same exact formulas on the right hand side you are reminded of the short leg, the long leg, and the hypotenuse. You must be able to identify those legs in the 30, 60, 90 degree in order to solve the problem. I'm going to go ahead and move it down to get the formula. In number one, we only have an angle and a side. That should be a hint for you to use special right triangle formulas. And remember, we have the right formula on the right hand side over here. The missing angle right here should be 45. And I know we're not asked to find the angle, but it helps if you can label 45, 45 degree. It also helps if you use a tick mark to label that these sides are going to be congruent, this side opposite or across from those angles. 
I'm going to have my answer here to be 6. My formula is 1 1 square root of 2. I'm going to have 6 square root of 2 as my answer for the hypotenuse. Let's take a look at the next one. 60, we're missing this angle, so that's 30, 60, 30 degree. And we can go ahead and write that in. Use this formula, top right corner here. We have the hypotenuse. So hypotenuse is 2 times the short leg. 10, what do you do to get the short leg? You just divide it by 2. If you have the short leg, you multiply by 2 to get the hypotenuse. And if you have the hypotenuse, which is 10, you divide it by 2 to get the short leg. So use the 2 to get in between these two sides. And remember, short leg need to be across or opposite from the 30 degree angle. My long leg is just using the short leg times square root of 3. So I will get 5 square root of 3 as my answer. Let's go ahead and pick one at random. Number 12, the last one here. I see that this is going to be 30, 60, 90. And the 60 degree angle is missing right there. So I'm going to label it with 60 degree. Now we're looking for the side though. So here I have what kind of side here? If you think long leg, you are correct. So the long leg is square root of 3 times the short leg. And what I will do is I will divide by square root of 3 to get my short leg here. If you work with the square root or you review the video called working with square roots, you will know you cannot have a square root on the denominator. So we have to get rid of that square root of 3 in the denominator here. And I do that by just multiply both the um, numerator and denominator by the exact same square root square root of 3 to get rid of that denominator square root of 3. After multiplying the top and the bottom by square root of 3, which is 1, I will be able to eliminate the square root of 3 in the denominators. And I end up with square root of 9, which is 3 on the denominators. On the very top, I will still get 12 square root of 3. And keep in mind, 3 can still be divided into 12. So my final answers is I'm going to go ahead and cancel both 3 and 12. 4. My final answer here is going to be 4 square root of 3 for the short side. Check and multiply by square root of 3. You will get square root of 9, which is 3. 3 times 4 is 12, and that's how we get the long leg 12. Check that way. Now the hypotenuse is 2 times the shorter leg. So all I have to do to get the hypotenuse is I take the shorter leg, which is 4 square root of 3, multiply it by 2. Go ahead and multiply 2 times 4. Like terms, multiply. And then the square root or the radical sign, radical 3, is going to follow into the answers with 8 square root of 3. Ta -da! Let's have you pause and try the rest of the problem during the class after you finish all of these problems. Don't forget to check and correct your answers. Ratio or formula variations, you will see that uh, we have the formula or ratio represented with the X, the letter N or the letter A, and we can have the uh, letter in front of the square root or behind the square root. Like the X is the behind the square root of 2, but the N and the A you can see is in front of the square root of 2. And that still mean the same ratio. Again, the same thing for the 30, 60, 90 degree. You can see the different variation of the same ratio or formulas, X and N and the letter A. This is the special right triangle. We only have two cases. You can see the formulas, the 30, 60, 90 degree. The first you can see it come from the equal angular, equal lat on the right. It's half of that triangle. And that's how we get the 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. And then 45, 45, 90 degree. The formulas for the 45, 45, you can see it could be the letter A, it could be the letter X, it could be the letter N. Just remember the ratio we show you. 
for this unit, what you have learned is the special right triangle. Let's go ahead and have you practice the problems posted in your Canvas class or your Jamboard. Good luck, and don't forget to check your answers.